to another episode of the Hot and Healthy Show, the top podcast and TV show for women in business. And these are conversations that change the way women work and live. I'm your host, Nicole Van Haddam, holistic health coach, TEDx speaker, and three times best-selling author. And it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to one of my dear friends, um, Maya Arslanajic, who has one of the most difficult names to pronounce who's an all-round awesome chicky babe and she's a hot looking hot looking thing um and Maya is going to be sharing her story today her personal journey through endometriosis what she learned on that journey and what you can also take away from her self-healing journey and also how she is serving and helping in the world so Maya's uh, background is that she was diagnosed three times with endometriosis and was given all sorts of uh, treatments recommendations from medical professionals which she can share a little bit more about that journey um, but that process of going through the self-healing with endometriosis led her to become a health coach a raw food chef a pranic healer and a Reiki master so some really good things came out of the journey and she says that basically after trying doctor's recommendations, she decided to heal naturally and experiment with hol a holistic approach to health. And this was her opportunity to prove to herself that her life philosophy actually worked. And her life philosophy is that we all have the power to heal. The power to heal, the power to be happy, the power to be healthy is in me, it's in you, it's in all of us. So Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you for this lovely introduction and thank you for having me here on the show. I really love to talk about health and lifestyle changes and holistic approach to life because um, I've been through it and I really want to share with the world the amazing impact that it had on me. Uh, so thank you very much for having me here. Very, very welcome. And so Maya, um, why did you choose this particular topic for, for your interview? Because you've got so much going on. Um, we could be talking about raw food, we could be talking all sorts of things. And why in particular did you want to focus on endometriosis? Well, the reason is because uh, there are a lot of women uh, today in our, in, our, in our society around us who are facing these uh, health concerns and issues. Some of them do not want to talk about it. Some of them are, you know, suffering inside their own four walls and thinking that there is no way out, there is no cure, there is no way to heal because... Um, Realistically speaking, what the doctors tell us is this. Uh, there is no cure, we don't know what caused it, and there is no way out other than uh, uh, surgery or um, other than uh, after you've gone through the surgery, uh, taking hormones and messing up your whole body, your whole system. So the reason why I really chose this topic is because not long ago, like, well, now long ago, almost 10 years ago, but uh, I was also facing the same thing because I was diagnosed three times. So in 2009, 2015, and last year, and I've gone through my journey. I've gone through my uh, roller coaster. I've been there as well uh, at that uh, down, uh, you know, downtime, the, 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 the lowest point of my life where I thought that, oh my God, like, is there a way out? Uh, and, you know, first time that I was diagnosed, I thought, you know, doctors know best and yes, I should follow their instructions and do what they told me. And that's just my bad luck. And, you know, I was I was being punished or, you know, how we love to uh, justify and excuse uh, these things. And I really followed the doctor's orders um, the first time it happened to me. 
But um, after a year after the surgery and after what after my healing, uh, uh, as the doctors told me, I faced some other health issues, and that was actually the moment when I realized that um, I'm not going to act out of fear and I'm not going to do anything that is not aligned with me, that does not resonate with me. And when I say this, I, I, I did not resonate with doctors telling me that there was no cure. I remember asking them, can I try any alternative medicine? They literally laughed at me and they said, if you want to waste your time and money, go ahead. So um, I, I, didn't, I, I did not resonate with this because I know, and, and even 10 years ago, I've done a lot of reading about who we are, what we're doing on this planet, how we're evolving, what we are, that we are energy, that our organs recover on their own. And imagine if we just give it a little push and support in terms of food, in terms of energy work, in terms of our mind, what food uh, and what medicine we would give to our body, to our organs, to heal and to recover. But of course, I had to go first through the doctor's uh, orders and realize that I do not resonate and I do not want to act out of fear. So that was my beginning. And that's actually why I, I, I wanted to talk about uh, endometriosis. And the reason why I love to call it a love affair is uh, for two reasons. Um, I really, first of all, it's not, a I don't like to call it a disease, illness or whatever. It's a temporary condition. It's our temporary condition that we can just go through our soul, our body decided to go through this experience to come out stronger, wiser, to, you know, expand. And it's just a temporary condition. It's an experience serving us to grow. So I don't like to call it um, anything else but a blessing and a love affair because we really need to accept this situation, not hate ourselves, hate endometriosis, you know, criticize ourselves. How did it happen to me? Why is God punishing me? Why? You know how we can go crazy with, in our mind. So we really need to accept this situation, this condition. We really need to accept and love ourselves. And I called it a love affair because it's really an affair that lasts for a very short period of time. It lasts just as long as it takes us to, 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 like, to, to figure out the main trigger and to change that trigger and to just take our life course in a different direction of healing, health and happiness. So I want to actually raise awareness through this interview, through this talk, uh, to all the women out there who are dealing with this or with any other um, health concern or any other um, situation, even, even uh, disease, illness, whatever they're dealing with, my ladies or even gentlemen, the power to heal is in us. We have the power to heal. And the biggest power that we have, I'm not healing endometriosis now. I'm healing my life because endometriosis or any other health concern condition was caused because of our lifestyle, of our emotions, of the way that we are living our life, which is not aligned with our soul. So this is why I want to talk about it. I want to let the world know that it's not a punishment, it's a blessing and the power to heal your life is in your hands. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maya. I knew this was going to be a great conversation. So uh, for those people who are tuning into this Thanks. and have never uh, been exposed to endometriosis, don't know what we're talking about, how would you describe what endometriosis is? So uh, endometriosis, other than being a temporary condition, uh, it's a condition in which the layer of uh, the tissue that normally covers the inside of the uterus, it starts growing on the outside of the uterus and sometimes uh, it happens that it, it also spreads over the ovaries, the fallopian tubes and some other tissues around the uterus and ovaries which was uh which is a, a more advanced stage which was my case 
uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, it's just basically the misplaced uh, endometrial tissue. And it's very painful. So uh, what uh, are the symptoms are, it's a, it's a really painful temporary condition, um, especially during our cycle, during uh, menstruation, and during sometimes also during the intercourse. It can be very painful. In rare, in, in, in some cases, um, there are also, uh, it, it, it happens that it, um, it also spreads, I think I said it, it spreads also on the other organs. So this tissue is not only on, on the, um, on the um, the uterus ovaries, but also it spreads on the other uh, on the other um, organs, and it somehow uh, absorbs them, or it, like it contracts them, which makes the pain even more uh, more severe. Like it was in my case, uh, the first time it was diagnosed. Okay, and so do we know what causes it? I mean, you did mention that it's it's a misalignment with your soul's purpose, um, and it's it's not living in harmony yeah. with our true healing mechanisms. Um, but what, how do the doctors describe what causes yeah. it? They said that they don't know what caused it. So uh, they said there is no uh, certain uh, uh, cause that they are aware of that actually causes it. So uh, uh, it, it, what, what does um, trigger it or what um, somehow supports it is the... Um, the production of hormones, estrogen in particular. So uh, when we are healing, we should just somehow try to balance the hormone. And it's also a sort of inflammation. But what really causes it, uh, doctors do not know. Uh, from my experience, because in my case, it happened three times. And I really did a lot of experimenting on my uh, body and on my health. And I was really, I mean, in the first time, it happened to me I had no idea what was happening to me I had no idea what was going on uh, but uh, you know nothing happens uh, uh, nothing is a coincidence uh, actually endometriosis in my first case was discovered by coincidence uh, when my friend invited me uh, because they needed people to practice Reiki on and I had lower back pain and I said I would love to to have my back lower back pain treated and uh, just two months before I visited my doctor and all my uh, everything all the results were great so when I came to this Reiki share um, I was treating my lower back and they said uh, what's happening with your pelvic area and I said nothing uh, and they said well uh, there is something going on you should check it I was like I was two months ago I was I checked it everything's fine but it wasn't fine and thanks to Reiki uh, I actually uh, discovered it, and if it wasn't for Reiki, I would probably have waited another year before I went again, and God knows what would have happened. I don't even want to think about it. So uh, even though doctors did say that there is no cure, um, I, what happened is, as I said, I was experimenting three times, as three times it was diagnosed. So first time I was experimenting with the energy work and really the healing process after my surgery, I was like three days after I was ironing, I was on my feet, I was walking around, like it was really the healing process, the recovery process was so fast and amazing. Uh, and I, I started practicing the energy work out of gratitude, just because it's it saved my life, I love to call it. Um, but as I was experimenting, I figured out that whenever I am feeling completely down, kind of depressed, low in energy, when I'm not being able to realize myself in the outer world, where I'm not feeling fulfilled inside, that's when I get it. So that's why I call it, um, that's why I call it a blessing, because really the three times that it happened to me were the three times where I was really not happy with certain areas of my life. And that was actually my, um, I would say my cause of endometriosis, even though the doctors say that they don't know the cause. Okay, and so you've mentioned one of the symptoms, which is lower back pain. What are a couple of other symptoms that people can look for? Well, uh, I'm, as I mentioned, um, 
uh, it, it's the, the 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 most alarming symptom are the uh, is the um, the pain, the severe pain in the pelvic area, uh, and um, during menstruations, it's really painful. Like I would take four painkillers, and it still would not help. And uh, you know, but I thought that was normal. That's how you know we women are blessed you know uh well every month and i i, I was really out of function days during my uh during my period and i would uh, that was even like i would i would have to stay home stay from work and i could i couldn't function i i really wasn't able to get up on my feet even after the four pillars uh the four pills that i would take the painkillers um so this was my symptom and this was the only uh symptom that i had in my case i know that in other cases as well uh people have uh, painful uh intercourse uh these these are also uh, symptoms they could have also bowel problems um and yes so th these are somehow the main uh the main the the, bi the biggest alarming um uh, uh, symptoms that the alarm and so with the doctors I mean what is the t typical recommendations that they have for treating endometriosis well um, honestly uh, in my case they did not they, they told me that there's nothing I can do about it and uh, uh, they said uh, you know just have a surgery uh, and uh, after the surgery I remember I was waking up and the first thing that I, like I open my eyes and I, I see the doctor and the first thing he tells me your time is running out you need to have babies as soon as possible and I was like, oh, I just closed my eyes. Like, can I go back to sleep? Because this was something that I was not ready for. This was, um, I was 28 and I was married back then. But even 10 years later, I still consider myself too young to have kids, at least for now. Now, but imagine me 10 years back so the two things that they told me was um, either get into artificial menopause or uh, get pregnant so these were their only uh, solutions that they offered me so and there are also some um, so hormonal therapy ba basically uh, and I actually after this the surgery I didn't go for the pregnancy because I wasn't ready for it but uh, I did go for the hormonal therapy uh, for a year and uh, and after a year one morning I woke up and I woke up my husband you know out of the blue and I woke up my husband and I was like you know what doctors told me that we should have a baby and that's going to solve my problem I think we should have a baby. And then he said, okay. I said, you know, I'm not ready for it, but if doctors say that's what I should do, then that's what I should do. I said, I'm not going to get pregnant immediately anyway. So by the time I get pregnant, I will probably be ready to have a kid. And what happened was that I really got pregnant first time I tried, uh, but three months later, I lost the baby. And that was actually a wake up call for me. And I was just thinking, imagine all the hormones that I took uh, during this year and imagine how messed, how, what I did to my body, this perfect, uh, you know, perfect system, what I, perfect natural system, I completely messed it up. And why would my body listen to me, uh, you know, now when I want to all of a sudden have a baby when I was feeding it with chemistry uh, throughout the whole year. And this scared me really, it scared me a lot. And I said, I'm not going to act out of fear. We are too perfect. The nature is too perfect not to give us ways how to heal our body, our organs. And that's actually when I decided that I was not going to act out of fear or I was not going to make any decisions that are not resonating with me. I have to say that if there are women who prefer medicine, who prefer hormones, who prefer pregnancy, I totally approve it as long as it resonates with them and with their decision. But I do not, and I'm not against medicine, I'm 
this is not against medicine and thank God that medicine exists and we are really blessed to have because you know it really has the benefits and we all are here thanks to medicine so if this is not me rejecting medicine I'm just saying that whenever I have a choice I would rather try the natural holistic approach and then if it doesn't work then I can try the medicine. Right. So you went down, that you had the surgery, you had hormonal treatment and you got pregnant and, and that didn't work. So in the end, um, what sort of pathways did you go through to give your body what it needed to heal itself? So um, after the first time, um, I, I started really dedicating my life to Reiki and energy work. Um, and then, uh, so I, I have to say that three, those three di diagnose uh, situations were really uh, my, like they were crossroads of my life. So first time I was really not happy living where I was living back then and the whole, and I, I mean, even though I had a great job and I was paid well and my family was there and everything was really great, but I wasn't happy in that environment. And this was what was really pulling me down and making me so unhappy. Uh, so I have to say that three situations were three crossroads where I really changed my life completely in order to heal. I aligned myself. So um, as I said, I really consider these, these situations blessings. And uh, even though I lost the baby, I said, okay, there has to be something greater and bigger that will come to my life. And it did because my only dream that I had back then was to move back to Qatar where I grew up and this I consider my home and this is where my heart is and where I feel really at home. And when I moved, I thought that all my problems would be solved. But I then, when I moved and made my dream come true, I realized that happiness does not, ex does not depend on the external circumstances, but on our inner state. So I gained um, a, a lot of kilos. I put, uh, I put on um, eight kilos in six months and I was 18 kilos plus than what, I'm, what I weigh now. And, but I didn't understand why it was happening to me. So other than having my health concerns, I had a weight problem as well. And that's, uh, that was actually my, se my second crossroad where I figured out if I gained in six months, eight kilos, what's going to happen in a year, two years, five years if I don't take some action. So I changed my life um, with your help. Uh, as my health coach, um, I discovered raw food um, and I literally, I, I, I cannot give up uh, good food, good food, I mean good only for the palate, not for our body, good food, um, because I really love food, I'm a gourmand, uh, I love uh, good food, uh, but I figured out that I have to have a better diet in my life lifestyle if I want to stay healthy. So I did lose 18 kilos thanks to my, the change of my lifestyle. Um, so basically what I figured out through my experience and what I kind of uh, learned, uh, I dedicated uh, to energy work, uh, Reiki, and then later on to pranic healing. Uh, raw food, uh, I'm not 100 raw. I, I just love raw food because I never loved cooking and I still do not like cooking and spending time in the kitchen. But I love what I loved about raw food is that it was feeding the cells, the tissues of our body and it was rising my vibe. I was feeling amazing and it was so simple and it took it like it's so fast and this is what I loved about raw food. So that's why it's like, it was like a whole new world discovered raw food as a tool to keep the balance in my life. And, and then I also did the, the I, I, I got um, certified as a holistic health coach. So now um, these are the tools that, uh, main tools that I use. Of course, I use many other things to heal my life, but these are the areas that I got certified to help others as well heal their life. 
Fantastic. And and so how is the inter intermediation uh, condition for you now? Do you have any symptoms? Are you asymptomatic or has it completely gone? So um, two, uh, in 2015, I was diagnosed again and uh, I, it was my opportunity to heal my, to actually prove to myself that all these tools that I was studying, that I was using, are actually working. So when it was diagnosed to me in uh, December 2015, I, I started healing it. I was very disciplined. I started exercising, doing Reiki, pranic healing, detoxing, eating healthy. So no sugar, no dairy, uh, no coffee, or at least you know, in, in very small quantities. Um, I was also avoiding meat, uh, especially, especially meat with hormones. So if it was meat, then it, would, it should have been organic. And what happened was that in uh, three months, uh, I went to, for a checkup and there was no signs of endometriosis. But then I said, okay, I, I didn't believe it. I was like, oh, this is impossible. It only three months took me to heal my life. So then I went to my doctor back uh, back in Croatia and uh, I went to her because she was the one who diagnosed and she said, what happened here? Your fibroid, because I had the fibroid as well, reduced uh, three times in size and the endometriosis disappeared. And she was looking, she said, but Maya, this is medically impossible. And I was so happy. And she said, uh, you know, the only thing I can tell you is continue doing what you're doing. Um, and last year, um, uh, fortunately, not unfortunately, fortunately, I was diagnosed again in summer. And to be honest with you, I was expecting it because uh, the past year and a half was very, very tough for me. And uh, I, I really went through the lowest point of my life. Uh, and I, for, from like for eight, nine months, I was literally just surviving the days. I was just coming home from work, sleeping, eating pizza, drinking Coke, and feeling so low and out of energy and motivation. I gained eight kilos. I gained eight kilos last year. So I was going for the checkup last year and I was like ready. I was like, I know the price. What's important is when you're going through this downtime, like don't, don't stress yourself, don't kill yourself, don't beat yourself up for it, just embrace it. That's what I did. I was feeling low because of some problems that I was facing in my external world. And I said, okay, I can deal with it. This is the way I'm dealing with it. Embrace it, love yourself for it, give yourself a break. And that's what I did. I was eating pizza every day, drinking Coke. And I said, are you aware of the consequences? Yes, I, yes I am. Are you ready to take them? Yes, I am. Perfect. And, um, and I, I was, I, but you know, when I, last year when I was diagnosed again, I was like, thank you. Thank you, God. Me it again so that, that I can, you know, wake up and I'll go back to sorting out my life and, you know, putting things in place and getting aligned with myself again. And just in, in short to tell you that since from summer to December, I was experimenting the healing process only with energy and food. And, uh, and food, not really rigor, like I, I wasn't really strict on diet, but just, you know, I was experimenting. And I did see the results in December. Uh, the, the, the fiber it reduced um, again, but endometriosis didn't. So then from December to February, I was mainly focusing on mindset. And in February, when I went back, I saw the results, even though uh, we're talking about millimeters, but there were results happening. So yes, I'm heading towards my healing uh, goal. So you've now had endometriosis three times and each one of those times it was the universe, your body, energy, whatever, getting your attention to say, Maya, are you paying attention? So yeah. now you've put together the protocol that's working for you and you are giving your body what it needs to heal and you're getting out of the way and you're being very supportive of it. So whether somebody has endometriosis or not, 
What are three foods and daily practices that you recommend for everyone to include in their life to help their body heal and function optimally? So, um, first of all, whatever health issue, illness, disease you are facing, um, or we are facing, we are not healing this illness. We should heal our life. So what my main goal uh, is to feel good every moment of the day, to feel great, to vibrate high, to feel so happy and to feel fulfilled and to feel, you know, I believe I can fly. This is the most important feeling that you should be running after. Not focusing on your illness, on your disease, on your condition, no. The number one thing we need to focus on is raising our vibes, feeling great every moment of the day. Second thing is that this feeling great does not depend on our external circumstances, which is I'm so grateful for my life situation for the past year and a half and the, 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 the stress that I was facing, the problems that I was going through. They only made me, um, they only made me remind myself that happiness, my happiness does not depend on them or on my external circumstances, but on me. And this is really what's so important to understand. Uh, and then when we start vibrating high, our body does not crave any more junk food, uh, food does, that does not support us. It naturally craves food that's really supporting our growth and, and, and that's, uh, that's feeding our cells, cells and tissues. So. But to get there, because if we start stressing ourselves immediately, oh, I need to eat healthy, I cannot eat, because my favorite food is pea pizza, and I love pizza, and I'm not giving up on pizza, never. So, like, if I start stressing myself, I'm not allowed to eat pizza, I have to, uh, you know, give up on sweets, or I have to give up on this or that, it's just creating additional stress. But if I start focusing on feeling good, rising my vibe, the need for pizza in me reduces to like the minimum. So I would recommend what helps me rise my vibe. I, for me, music is the key to healing. Like I rise my vibe with music. But before you start rising your vibe, you need to ask yourself one question and be honest to yourself because this is where your healing is. It lies in this question or in your answer. How happy and how fulfilled am I with my life now? Like this is where the, the key to, to your healing, our healing is. And when you figure out what the answer is, because we all know the answers, uh, we all know them, it's just, it depends whether we're ready to accept them or to say them out loud or not, but we know that. So we need to be honest to ourselves and ask ourselves this question, how happy are we in our life with our relationship, with our work? with our spirituality, personal life, friends, whatever, cover all the areas of your life and be, be honest to yourself. Like this is where the key is. And then afterwards, you start working on the rituals. For example, I do not miss my morning rituals for nothing in the world. Like even though we were get like this was early here at eight o'clock, I mean, early because I still need three, two to three hours before this to do my morning rituals. So like, I wouldn't miss them for anything in wow. the world only because of the amazing feeling that I take from my morning rituals throughout the day. And this is the most important healing for us. So when it comes to, um, uh, to food or to um, the, the rituals, Self-care and self-love is really important. And uh, I mentioned the food that um, I really reduce coffee, like I have coffee once a week, but really when I feel like enjoying the moment 
Um, I don't, I, I mean, I cannot say I don't have sweets. I don't, but you know, once in a month I have something sweet. Um, I do not, I try to, uh, I reduced in, um, dairy intake and bread. Bread is killing me. Like this is my weakest spot. So, and I really focus on my aloe vera and my green smoothie Yay! and my superfood. Yes. Um, and, and more vegetables. Uh, I love, I, I, as I said, I, I balance my life with raw food. Uh, and these are actually the things that are healing me. I also discovered Ayurveda and Ayurveda is also supporting me a lot and physical activity. Um, and physical activity is also very important. Actually, they say that, um, people who do not exercise, they are the women who do not exercise are actually the ones who are more uh, open to endometriosis and in my case i really like i love food but for me it's easier to give up food than to do exercise so when i was diagnosed every time what i did i literally made myself do some exercises. So now I'm boxing and walking and doing yoga. <laughs> Fantastic. So Maya, I, I love the journey. Yeah. I love what you've shared. I love the very holistic approach to supporting your body, healing itself. And I also love the fact that, you know, your focus is not around food or movement, which, it, which is the next layer down. You've gone right to the top, which is, you need to heal your life. Those other things are elements yes. of how you can support your body to heal. But the critical thing is what is not working in your life? Heal your life, get an alignment, live on purpose, you know, ask yourself some tough questions, do what needs to be done to align your life and your thoughts and your actions every day and your food and your movement. So it starts with heal your life, ask yourself the tough questions and then work downwards from there. I love that. So Maya, what do you, what do you offer your clients now and how can they get access to you? So um, I started, first it started off as a blogging, my raw food. Food, uh, weight loss because I went, I lost 18 kilos uh, and healed my life. So I was just sharing my journey, but then now it became a business platform. So it's Happy and Healthy by Maya, and Maya it's spelled with a J, so Maja dot com. Um, so what I do, I actually offer one on one coaching, and I I also uh, one on one coaching where we do um, basically um, we do the things that through the through conversation with with clients i see what they need and where they are at and based on that we work actually around it and uh, it's um there are different packages but uh at least you need to really focus on yourself for at least three months to see some results because you know we've been living our life repeating certain habits for 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 20 30 years and it's really like we need some time to reinstall new habits uh, to change our belief system because belief system is the core the key of our healing what we believe in and uh, and what what I do and I also have a Facebook group uh, it's called yes I can the the power is in you it's ladies only and in that group I share my tools how I rise my vibe how I change my thoughts how I feel great every moment of my day uh, and I, I share those tools for free um, and, and, and anyone, uh, I mean, all the ladies can join it if they, if they wish to, uh, to, to, get, to, to get something out of it. So it's not focusing only on healing endometriosis or, or any other, but healing your life and just changing your mindset, your beliefs, 
Because what Fantastic. you believe so in Maya, it looks like the internet connection so is starting create. to break up. So we'll need to wrap it up. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to your website and share more information about your group as well. So thank you so much. I know it's been challenging. We had some technology problems the other day, but it looks like we've got great content this time around. So thank you again. I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing you and hugging you again next time I'm in Doha in Qatar. I can't wait and I hope that will be soon. And thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you for sharing here with the group. And um, I'm looking forward to connecting with you again soon. So for the listeners and the, and the watchers, um, make sure that you connect with Maya. She's amazing. She has so much to offer you. And I really do encourage you to reach out to her. So thank you very much, Maya. And thank you everyone for tuning in. Until next time, be hot and healthy. If you like this episode, make sure you hit the subscribe button and go and check out all our other videos. I'll see you in the next one.